What up, YouTube? It's your boy, it's Carter TV, back with chapter four, Secrets in the Streets. Um, we start this chapter off with Tony and Star. Uh, Star pulls up to uh, Tony's crib thinking KJ's there. He ain't there. She's pulling up there. She's, you know, she's giving her mother a few words. The mother's like, hold up, young lady. I don't know who the hell you are, but you might want to lower your tone. Now, Star doesn't really know too much of Tony's moms. You feel me? So she don't know, like, this lady will kill you with the snap of her fucking fingers. So she's like, who are you? And she's like, oh, I'm KJ's baby mother. We got a kid together. He's three years old. KJ hasn't been helping with nothing. I'm doing this by myself. And, you know, she kind of broke down. And Tony kind of just looked at her and was like, come inside. You know, they have words. They, you know, she calmed the situation down. And she basically asked her, like, how you been supporting your baby if KJ's not helping you? And she was just like, you know, um, I boost and here and there. I've been, you know, stealing. I've been getting help from my mom. And her mom could do so much little. So she was just like, he has to step up. And, you know, he's in the streets. He got money. He could at least come by, see his son, and help out. So Tony basically tell her, was just like, you know, you can't rely on no nigga to help you with no baby. You know, baby not going to keep no dude. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of gave Tony a backflash when she was in the same situation with KJ. And she told KJ's dad, like, yo, you got to help. I'm pregnant. Da -da -da. And he kind of just disregarded everything she said. So she still moved forward with her life. And KJ came out the way he came out. So Tony then asked her mother, was like, so how you been getting money? And she was just like, here and there, here and there. And she was like, if you want to get money, I'll teach you the ropes. This is a way for Tony to take Star under her wing. So she was like, come with me. Come with me. And then on their way out the door, she was like, you know, where's your baby now? She's like, I left, him with, I left him with my mom. So she go, oh, you have a boy. She was like, yeah. So I got a grandson. And she was like, grandson? She was like, yes, I'm KJ's mother. She was like, oh, like, because she never met. KJ's mom, so it was kind of surprising for her, right? So they met, they talked, she got acquainted with Star, basically Star just gave her, like, she never worked a day in her life. She was getting money from KJ every, you know, hand and there from time to time until, you know, he, when, she told, when she told him that she was pregnant, he kind of just kind of left her be. Now, I feel like Tom, KJ did that because he in the street life. And then Tony caught wind of that too. Like he in the street life, he got a kid. He know he got a kid. He probably trying to protect his kid by staying, you know, not too close to him. So Tony basically explained that to stars. Like if you know KJ in the streets, him having a child and people seeing with his kid, it would make him a, a vulnerable target. And she was just like, I wasn't thinking like that. And well, this is stuff you gotta think about, especially when you're dealing with a dude in the streets. So, so Star kind of got relief for that. So they end up going to meet up with Sting. Sting is a former right hand man of Boss. He was, you know, Boss is a general. You know, he had shit on lock in the streets in certain parts of the, the hood. But when Boss kind of just like pushed him aside, it kind of disrespected their friendship. And Sting was out there just fending for himself. He was under KJ's, you know partner, you know, movement, and he wasn't feeling it, because KJ was treating him like shit, so, she meets up with, you know, Sting, Sting basically telling him, telling her, like, yo, we got a dilemma in the move, and she's like, what's going on, she like, one of little KJ's little henchmen running around, blocking everything, you know, he fucking up the works, you know, he's stopping flowing from coming over here, so we can't get shit moving. Tony has a whole motive. Like I told you on the beginning of the story, she has a whole motive. She has a whole thing she's doing. She's brewing. Um, she got a whole plan to sweep boss from under his feet and push him aside. Is either you kill him or you push him aside softly. So she was like, take me to him. So Sting, her, and, and Star, go see your boy. So once the boy sees Sting, he didn't already know what the time is. He grip his pole out. He like, what happened? You back again? Then I just, you know, kicked your ass from over here. You ain't getting no money over here, boy. I already told you. KJ got this on lock, man. Move from all that. Boss ain't in charge no more. Who you put? 
You brought your bitch with you? He started going off on Tony, not knowing who she is. You brought your bitch with you? She'll get smoked right along with you, boy. And then he looked at Tony like, bitch, if you know what's good for you, you step the fuck up with your man. And you brought your little sister too? I spit on her. Like he was, the little, the nigga was disrespecting him. So Tony was like, you finished? He was like, hell yeah, I'm fucking finished, bitch. Watch, you gonna suck my dick? Tony backed out and blew boy head off. Boom! Dropped him. So all the people behind him, you know, his man to them senior was like, oh, like. So Tony was like, thing, put these niggas in check now. Let's get this shit rolling. Scared the shit out of Star. She shook him up. She's like, oh, shit, what the fuck? She was ready to run. She was like, good, get your ass in the car. Let's go. She's scared. I said, this is the way of the streets. You got to show these niggas we women got power out here. We women got power. So I was just like shooken up. She said, you want to get money or you want to be a peasant? What you want to do? So I was like, remember, you got a son to look after. Ain't no nigga going to help you. Star got in the car. They drove away. End of that chapter. Now I'm going to take you to Charlie and Dale. Where Dale is waking up. And uh, Charlie's grandma of the crib, but you know, Charlie, Charlie's over him with the gun in his, to his forehead. He like, yo, what the fuck going on, Charlie? Why you got a gun in my forehead, boy? He basically like, yo, boy, I'm not going to sugarcoat shit with you. And I'm not going to bullshit with you. I need to know what happened with my father. You was out there working with him. I need to know what's going on. He like, yo, bro, I ain't got nothing to do with your father or your mother getting killed or niggas crossing sides. He like, how you know my mom's got killed? I said, nigga, I was there that night. Now, <coughs> the night Charlie's mom got killed, there was a lot of niggas in there with masks on, except Boss and Tony. They was the only two who wasn't masked up. A lot of the other niggas was. You feel me? KJ, uh, Charlie's mom got hit, and the bullet she died from it came from another person. And his father got hit. He got shot by KJ. KJ shot him. Um, Charlie didn't know what was going on because at the time it happened, he blacked out. Like, they knocked him out. Let me say they knocked him out. They knocked him out. And he woke up in the hospital. And he went. He left the room, went looking for his pops and found him in a room, handcuffed to the bed. So basically, Dale, you know, told him what happened. He took the gun from his head. And then he was like, yo, what you, Dale basically was asking him, like, yo, what you doing back in town? You know, you can't be out here. And how you know where to find me? He said, your boy sticks. He laughed. He said, that motherfucker sticks, man. He said, uh, what you gonna do now that you back out here? So Charlie basically wanted to get revenge, right? And the only thing he could remember from that night, um, or let me not say that night, that the two days that, that happened to him, he remembers seeing KJ Mons get killed in front of him. And he kind of came back to him and was like, yo, I know your mom's died too, boy. I was there that night. He said, I know, nigga. I'm the reason why you got away. He said, I remember her. So they kind of had a touching moment. He was just like, I just want to know what happened with my dad. You know, I ain't been hearing from him. Now, in his mind, he think his dad dead. In all reality, he just can't get to his dad. So, he basically tell Dale, like, the lawyer came to me, and, you know, he found me in my grandmother's crib, and he told me my dad is alive, and he told me, you know, the, this organization got him hemmed up. So, it kind of ring a bell to Dale, like, at the organization. Oh, that's the organization Boss is a part of. Uh, that's the organization where they can't really be touched. It's a suicide mission going after them. And Charlie didn't give a fuck about the suicide mission. You know, his motive was to get even. He said, the organization, we got your your mother killed and your father sent away. So, that's all I know. I don't know what's the details on why they got rid of your moms, though. But then Charlie was like, I got to find out. And he's like, I need your help, Dale. And then Dale was basically telling him, like, boy, we can't be seen out here in these streets. You know that. Like, if niggas see us, it's on for us. It's on site. Like, Especially if they don't know you dead, boy, it's best we stay dead and stay under the radar. He said, we gonna stay under the radar. I got a plan. He said, Dale, and then the devil was just basically like, how we gonna get money? And then 
how we going, you know, move, maneuver. You only got a gun, and I ain't really got no peace like that. I dropped my peace back at that, that shootout. He said, well, I know it was KJ. KJ and his people, was, they was coming for you. I think Spider must have gave you up. He said, that nigga Spider, man. Shit, I know they smoked him, though. They smoked him, though. Last time they seen Spider, he was, he was shot up. He was shot up. So... Uh, Sticks was calling his phone, was calling their phone, like, yo, bro, you heard about Spider? He got hit, he got hit. He got hit, he got hit. He's like, I heard, bro, I heard. He's like, where you at? He's like, I'm in a good spot, I'm in a good spot, I'm just laying low key. He said, yo, what we gonna do about this work? I don't know, but I'm gonna hit you back with a plan. He said, all right. Boom. So, Charlie basically tells him, you know, we gonna do something, we gonna get this money. And last time I know, you know the, you know the, you know KJ spots. And then he like, he like Charlie. I know you anything about robbing these niggas spots. He said we gonna need to. We gonna need firepower. We gonna need money. We gotta do something. He said you right. That scene end with them. Now we go to another scene with Detective Peterson. Detective Peterson is a dirty cop. He's been in Boss's pocket. Now he's in KJ's pocket. Um, a couple of the murders on the street was because of him. You know, when KJ and his people was going to get to certain people, they sent in Mr. Dirty Peterson. Now, Peterson is in his office. He's at his desk. He's getting a new partner. On the first episode, y'all know he killed his partner. You know, he shot him in the back of the head. Um, basically, this is why he works alone, because he's dirty, and he don't want anybody else on, 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 a, on the money he began on the streets. Um, so... He was signed a new partner, Officer Johnson. You know, Officer Johnson is coming in. He, he's a rookie detective. And basically, you know, he's trying to make a name for himself. Um, so the lieutenant called him in, like, you get a new partner today. He was just like, you know, I don't need no new partner, man. I've been telling you about this. And he basically was like, I'm not hearing it. He's coming here, deal with it, or quit. So Peterson is, you know, forced to take him in as a partner. So he takes him in as a partner, and then he basically was just like, you know, he was he was distant from the dude. He ain't really want no part to the dude. The dude was trying to, you know, give him small conversation. He wasn't trying to do a whole lot of that. So he was just like, when the dude came in, Peterson was on his way walking out, right? Uh, Peterson was on his way walking out. And he's like, hey, 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 you, you, you Peterson, right? He jumped in the car with him. He was like, yeah, and Peterson was, you know, basically about to take off with the dude at the car at the door. He was like, hey, man, what's, what's the deal with you, man? Like, And be Peterson basically tell him, like, I don't want no partner. You know what I'm saying? I work alone. I've been working alone. I don't want no fucking partner. So Detective Johnson basically tell him, was like, listen, I don't I wouldn't want no rookie dude on my team anyway, especially when you were vet. I understand that. But I'm here now. And we partners. So deal with it. So he basically told him what it was and it kind of hit Peterson like, what? All right. So Peterson shrugged it off like, all right, we partners. Let's go get the bad guys. So Peterson is basically going to go see one of his little informants. So he go to a little, you know, a little deli and he parked there. He was just like, yo, I'm going in the deli and I'll be right back out. So he told, you know, Detective Johnson stay in the car. He said, all right, cool. Peterson goes in. He sees the store the store clerk. The store clerk pro point him to the back. He goes to the back. He goes out through the back onto the opposite side of the store where there's a back area. So he sees the informant. They talking and whatever, whatever they talking. And Detective Johnson was like, you know what? I'm kind of thirsty. Let me go in the store and get a drink. Goes in the store. The clerk notices him. He sees his badge. He's like, oh, you... You did, you the, he basically telling me, he was asking me, he was like, yo, you Detective Peterson partner? He was like, yeah, yeah. And he looked around and he's like, I don't see him in the store. I don't see him in the store. So the dude was just like, oh, he probably went out to the bathroom or something. So Johnson shrugged it off. He went to go grab a drink, broke back outside. Then he hears commotion going on around the corner from him. He slowly creeps around the corner with his gun out. Cause he hear commotion, he hear loud talking. He peeks over, he sees Peterson talking to some dude, look like a drug dealer. And he overhears the conversation and then like saying, oh, we was a bang out, KJ caught, a, caught another body. 
they killed some little nigga named Spider and come to find out Dell is alive. And he was like, Dell alive? That little motherfucker, where the fuck he at? He running around hiding out. He got away last night. Shit is crazy. It's a whole body scene over there. So Peterson get wind, like he hears something behind. And Johnson kind of kicked like a glass bottle and made noise. So when, when Peterson looked up, he ducked back and he ran back to the car. So he was like, what the fuck going on? Right? Ran back to the car. So Peterson and I, I'm going to look into that and see what's going on. He's like, yo, KJ, he wants Dale bad, bro. So if you find him, you know what to do. He's like, I got you. He dips off. He goes back to the car when Johnson is waiting. He was like, yo, you good? I ain't seen, I want to store to get a drink. I ain't see you in there. He's like, I use the bathroom. He's like, all right. He was like, nachos, messing with me. He had to see what he tell him. So they didn't go on somewhere else, right? Um, Johnson was like, I got to use the bathroom. So he made a local stop. Once he made a local stop, Peterson took off and left him. He left him where he was. So Johnson was like, what the fuck? This nigga leaves me. Oh my God, he's an asshole. So he heads back to the station. He, he sees the lieutenant, he's like, yo, Peterson left me out there. The lieutenant is shaking his head like, damn. All right, I'll, I'll talk to him. So he goes to his desk, he gets situated in, because when he came in, Peterson was on the way walking out. He gets situated, you know, some of the other officers talk to him, was like, hey, you Peterson's partner, right? He's like, yeah, yeah, you know, welcome to the team. And, and then one guy was like, yo, be careful with him. He was like, wow, what happened? He's a shady dude. Be careful with him. A lot of complaints out here about him, and if you ain't hear about what happened with his last partner, go find out. So Detective Johnson started digging in old files, snooping around, trying to find out what's going on with his old partner. He found out his old partner was killed in action. At a situation that involved, you know, King and boys, you know, top dudes out here. So he does a lot of digging into it. And he comes across something that caught his eye um, that made him want to dig further. And him digging into it, he had questions. So he basically asked the lieutenant, like, yo, what's good with this file? Like, why is this on soft case? If y'all got the murder weapon, and the lieutenant kind of shrugged him off. He's like, it's not a big deal. It's no big deal. If you think you can solve it, take it. He's like, you sure? He was like, yeah. So he gave him a case. So that way, Peterson could kind of be alone for a little minute, right? So he's digging in, he's finding some things, and they were saying that Charlie, Charlie Benson, he was, you know, unknown whereabouts, and he was going to look into it. So the lieutenant is seeing him working. He gets Peterson to call. Calls Peterson. It's like, hey, where are you? He said, I'm on the road. What's going on? Your partner's here. Okay, and? He's looking in the old case file. What old case file? He's like, you know, the one with uh, Kim, the agent that got killed? He's like, so? That's a cold case. He's not going to find anything. Well, let's hope. For your sake, Peterson, let's hope he don't. Because if he do, that's your ass. He hangs up the phone, ends the scene right there. Now we go to Boss. Um, boss in the organization. Um, the organization get wind of Charlie's whereabouts. They find out he's alive. They found out, you know, he's, he's breathing. And boss basically is like, okay, so he's breathing. What, what kind of a threat would he be? And they basically is like, well, wasn't y'all, wasn't you supposed to take care of that boss? And it was just like, I did. I left my son to take care of him. It seemed like he couldn't kill his best friend. So, and then they all look at each other and like, it seems like a, you know, Similar situation to you. He like, listen, I couldn't kill my best friend, but I got rid of him though. He's no, he's no, he's no bother to us. So basically, the organization was just like, well, your best friend got word to his son. He said, like, how do you know that? We got our money and ears everywhere, okay? So he got word to his son. Now his son may be on the move about something. So boss, we need you to put somebody out there and go find this little man. Because if he starts tampering, it's going to be a problem for us. So boss kind of shrugs it off. He's like, yo, that guy ain't nothing to worry about. He's not a street kid. He's a school kid. There's nothing. If you want to find him, go to the schools. Go to the library. That's where you're going to find him. 
And then they all looked at him and said, Indigo, for your sake, let's hope he be at one of these libraries and schools. Now they got it in for Charlie because he's supposed to be going. King's basically, you know, getting the word out. And how he got the word out was because of Tony. Tony wanted to know where Charlie was. So she got the lawyer to speak to King in the organization, you know, let them speak or whatever, whatever. You know, they got word to speak just so she could find out where Charlie is and get rid of him. So it could be like picking up the, picking up the pieces that boss was supposed to fix. But not knowing, she not knowing, Charlie know how to move in these streets now. It's over for that. He got Dale, he got a partner with him. So him and Dale is going to be moving in. They first thing is to get some weapons. So we go back to Charlie and Dale, right? Uh, Dale calls up Sticks. Sticks, yo, where you at? Oh, I'm in such and such. Meet me right here, right now. Nigga, you know I ain't got no car. I don't care, get there. So Sticks pulls up with them. He's like, yo, who this? He look, he's like, ain't you Charlie? Ain't you supposed to be dead? This your man, Charlie? <clears throat> he's like, yeah, this my man, Charlie. Uh -huh. He's like, yo. <laughs> I mean, you know, her rapping with your pops and shit. You know, that's crazy. He killed his mom. That triggered Charlie. Like this, he grabbed, he grabbed Sticks. I was like, yo, watch your fucking mouth and watch who the fuck you speaking to. That's my father and that's my mother you talking. Sticks thought he was a nobody. Sticks thought he was a little punk. So Sticks like, get the fuck off me, dude, before I beat you up. Charlie snuffed him. Boop, dropped him. Dad was like, what the hell? Like, he said, I won't have, then, he, then he looked at Sticks. I won't hesitate to kill you. So don't fucking play with me. Sticks looked at him. They were like, yo, all right, chill, y'all, chill, y'all. Sticks, we ain't bringing you here to fight the nigga. We got a money move. We got to do something. We need guns out here, especially your stupid ass, because you always getting robbed and shit. So Charlie looked at him. For a nigga who trying to fight me, he's sure getting robbed, pussy. Sticks like, ain't nobody be getting robbed. Shit be falling out my pocket, trying to be funny. He said, what we going to do here anyway? This this is KJ spot. And this is weapon spot. We can't go in there. Niggas will shoot us first sight. Nah. They'll go. I know the ins and outs. We snagging weapons and we dipping. You down? He like, I don't know. Charlie looking like, yo, this ain't up for debate. You already here? Let's go. He like, damn, for real? He's like, come on. So they run in there. They start looking. They'll lead them to the weapon spot. There's two dudes in there. They in there cleaning guns. They in there, you know, you know, loading clips up. It's just two dudes. Charlie knock on the door. Boop, 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 boop. The dude's like, who that? I don't know. Get the door, man. So when he knock on the door, he sticks his head out. Nobody's there. Dude's like, I don't see nobody. Charlie rocks him from behind with a, with a pole. Boom! Right across the set. Drop him. The dude who was loading the gun, he's like, what the fuck? So he looking. He gets up. He walks towards the door. Yo, you good? Like, Yo, you good? Like, yo. Rocks the other dude. Boom. They run inside. Uh, Sticks and Dale, they grab the two bodies, pull them in, tie them up. Charlie bagging up guns. They bagging up. Somebody's coming in. Sticks like, yo, niggas is coming. Niggas is coming. Come on, we got to break bread. 